Hey everyone, how's it going? I got a really cool deck here to show you, and it focuses around Deathless Knight and dumping Deathless Knight in the graveyard, similar to how I recently made a deck dumping Vengevine. This works a little bit different though, and you have Gather the Pack to dump four and bring one to two to your hand, that's fine. And you have Relentless Pursuit. Pick two of the first four creature and or land cards from your library. Fetch those cards, then destroy the rest. Well, we'll only want to pick one and then destroy three. And the only one to choose from is the Deathless Knight. So we're going to load up the graveyard as much as we can. And Deathless Knight says whenever you gain eight or more life, if this creature is in your graveyard, return it to the battlefield. That's great with a Johnny's first ability energize four and gain nine life for just six and because it's just for six whirlwind of thought helps a lot when you cast a non-creature card draw a card then you gain three loyalty this effect can trigger up to four times per turn everyone knows whirlwind of thought by now but just two non-creature cards will allow you to have the loyalty needed to gain nine life and bring every deathless knight back from the graveyard every time you do it um we have inscription of abundance a new card from zendikar rising that i really like with this deck especially target creature you control gets plus three plus three then you gain life equal to that creature's power so if i do that to one deathless knight it then has eight power to gain eight life and bring all of the deathless knights back you can then kick it to fight the first opposing creature uh which is really good because we don't have a lot of removal in here we also have warbriar blessing which if you haven't really been using this card i don't know why not because it is an amazing common especially in a deck like this where you can just keep bringing your dudes back and in the vengevine deck it's okay to be fighting your opponent's creatures left and right if you had to. And we also have Animus Awakening for some gem conversion. And we have Happily Ever After. Who would have thought, right? Like, sometimes it's hard to figure out where this card goes. Well, this sits perfectly in this deck. When the support enters the board, each player gains 8 life and draws a card. Boom, bring all your knights back right there. At the beginning of your turn, if there are 5 or more colors among non-token cards you control and you have full life, gain 30 loyalty. Well, that's white. Okay. The Deathless Knight is black and green. So you just need red-blue now. Well, Song of Creation and Whirlwind of Thought have red and blue in them. So as you're doing this, you're going to get the 8 life to return all the Deathless Knights. And you're going to be getting that 30 loyalty pretty quickly, especially if you can fight off your opponent's creatures. So at the beginning of your turn, you do have full life. That's where that Warbriar comes in good and the Inscription's kicker. And then, of course, Shadow Spear to give plus 3, plus 3 lifelink and trample in case there's a blocker. And that plus 3, plus 3 makes him have 8 power. So when just one of them attacks, you're going to return all of them to play. All right, let's give it a shot here. It's a really good deck. There's only two Mythics in it, no Masterpieces. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to, you could take those two Mythics out. It, it's not going to hurt that bad. I have them in because, for one they're great cards for two you get that extra loyalty from whirlwind and then for three with song of creation um you could do like a gather the pack or something and get the two creatures but normally unless you had gem conversion or something to produce mana you might not be able to cast a creature right away with this you could get them out right away or get the life gain from another card right away as song of creation does its thing and then if you have any extra Deathless Knights in your hand at the end of your turn, they'll be dumped in the grave. That's fine. That's perfect. Because then all we got to do is gain 8 life instead of paying 12 mana per. So 
Let's go for Gather the Pack first, and then we'll hit with an inscription on our first Deathless Knight that we get, even though we wouldn't have to put him there. If we can get six loyalty real quick, too, we can use that to bring them in and then inscription. But at that point, why inscription if you got our, already have all your guys back? Um, see, it's, it just works so well that sometimes you don't need the cards you got. And maybe we'll save that to actually fight an opponent's creature. I mean, I could go for it right here, right now, to get them all out this turn if I had the landfall to do it, like the, the waterfall. But I think I want to dump some more in the grave. That's kind of what you're going to end up doing a lot here is not worrying about playing the actual Deathless Knights but rather getting them loaded in and loaded in and loaded in. And you can even, you know, sleep on it a little bit to where you're just filling your grave, not doing much, and then the moment you gain eight life, boom, you can kill your opponent. And every time they kill these death, uh, deathless knights, well, just gain the eight life from either first ability or the other cards, and you're good to go. So we'll move that up, we'll move that up, and where do we want to go? All right, we'll do it. Against Koth, too, huh? Ooh, he, he didn't get a good one out of that. That's rare that Koth doesn't get a, a hit for red when he uses his first ability. All right, he's going to get one after this, though. Because I'm going to get that white hit. Yeah. Let's dump three more in the grave. Now I've considered putting another card in here. Um, to drop the spare um, Deathless Knights I have in hand that I'd rather not cast. Like that I'd rather just gain eight life for if I could find another way to get these ones in the grave. But... I think the deck is, is pretty solid how it is. And there we go. Now, next turn, you'll see when I use first ability just how powerful this deck is. And this was only from two of my spells cast to dump creatures. I don't have song allowing me to run things out. Or dump the rest of these yet. Um, you can get some really strong runs going with the Song of Creation here. And just fill the graveyard full of these guys. 38 life, boom, from this inscription. And sure, let's kick it and get rid of that creature over there. We want to keep some full health in case we get the happily ever after. Even though a lot of times it's not even needed, and that extra loyalty you'll gain from it, yeah, it's nice to have the 30 loyalty. Um, you can start using the second ability, Energize 8, and each of your creatures get plus 4, plus 4. Well, you'll only have one creature. But once you've used that a few times, third ability comes in handy to prevent a lot of damage for based off of how many Energized Gems you have on the board, and that can... You know, keep the happily ever after running. So let's see here. For five. You know what? We only get two from green. I wish the mana bonuses were a little different here. I'm going to dump one of these. Just because. I want to take this hit right here. Oh, didn't have to dump one. But oh well, it's fine. And we're going to win next turn. As you can tell, my opponent didn't put up a big challenge from Koth. That's very surprising. So maybe we'll run into another fight real quick after this. Hopefully with a little bit more stiff competition. And uh, maybe I'll even get a quicker victory, which tends to happen a lot with this deck. I've noticed since I've built it that... Uh, you know, your first turn, you could gather the pack once or twice, maybe, and then 
if you got lucky, get a free swipe to be able to use first ability or something. Like, there's a lot of easy opportunity to make things go really right with this deck. And it actually can be used in the Titanomachy event that's going on right now for either the top or bottom node. You should be good. Um, there's three enchantments in here. Uh, and then if you have the song running, you know, you can get into them. Now, what I like about the Vengevine deck a little bit different is that it gives you the option to accept each Vengevine from the graveyard back into play. Now, this allows you to be careful, and it allows you to not overkill your opponent if you'd like. Like, I've benefited from that in the Titanomachy event to get objectives instead of winning too quick because you get to select if you want to bring back the venge vines with this well if you happen to gain eight life then you're bringing them all back whether you like it or not and uh that's good too though because with the venge vines you gotta click 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 for all of them in this case they just come right back so it's really cool actually highlighting this uncommon to be such a powerful creature. And this planeswalker that a lot of people have looked past, like it's not in its prime anymore, the un Ajani Unyielding, because not a lot of people use energy and the abilities aren't really good for the most part. Except right here you really get the most bang for the buck out of it. And I kind of think Happily Ever After is like practically perfect in this, even though all that loyalty you get isn't going to um, account for much. Let's start here. It will keep the ability to keep your Deathless Knight coming back, though, with all that loyalty you gain. You want me to go there, huh? Mm, okay. There we go. Now you see, look at that. That's great. And uh, we have first ability. So we'll go ahead. Wow, we might get this 30 loyalty really quickly, too. We just got to drop happily ever after, after doing the ability, and next turn we should have 30 loyalty. I think this is the quickest I've done that, and I don't know how much easier it can get with happily ever after. That was a really nice uh, first hand, opening hand and uh, gem match there. All right, let's go like this. Okay. Yep. So we don't even have to use the ability now to bring our guys back from now on as long as this deathless knight is out as long as one of them is out and can attack you'll gain the eight life every turn to keep returning them so you could start moving into the second ability and then third ability and stuff like that look at that there we go we got our 30 loyalty on what was that turn two turn three that was nice all right, let's Relentless Pursuit, or do we want to... Nah, we'll Relentless Pursuit. Get a few more in the graveyard. Oh, there are some in there, though. I think we did. Did we discard some? Yeah, so let's go ahead. Oh, we didn't. We got all of them. All right, no big deal. Um, You want me to use that? I don't want to use that. I want to take... Well, you do like the color black, but you like red more. I like red more, too. So, it's too bad for his uh, berserking, trampling elemental over there. That's a cool creature, but just doesn't stand a chance right now. 
And it wouldn't stand a chance if we had the Warbriar Blessing either. I'd be taking out every one of my opponent's creatures. Well, I think the last creature um, each time I attack. And of course, we're going to be able to withstand a lot. So let's go ahead and hit right. Hey, let's let's use these abilities like I said I would. We don't need the first one anytime soon. Okay. And three more Deathless Knights dropped in the grave. And you see how well everything is working out here? Like, we're, we're loading them in there, we're getting the loyalty, we're gaining the life and keeping the life at full, we're taking out the opponent's creatures, and it's a really nice synergy. Like, even if my opponent had a bunch of kill cards, well, all right, my first ability is basically going to be stacked every turn for me to bring this guy back with haste, with lifelink, with trample even if you had the blockers. And there's just not much you can do about it. I don't need to take this turn. You basically see what it's all about. We'll just gain some life at the end, just for the fun of it. But there you have it. If you have a Johnny unyielding and you haven't really figured out a great deck for it, here's a fine example of it. And again, like I said, you don't need Whirlwind and Song of Creation to make this happen. Um, you can also use that green spell, what is it, Nissa's Awakening or whatever, that where you draw five cards and gain 20 life for 13. That could be added as well. But there are only four supports you can have with this Planeswalker. And I believe five spells so you have to consider that one going in um i also thought about xenagos the masterpiece because that goes great in this deck and vengevine because all those dudes you constantly get back that become huge well xenagos not only then gives the trample but doubles that like every time you get them back so often and it's just, it is hardcore fun. So give it a try as soon as you can. All right, see you later. Good luck.